Right, so we're now ready to demonstrate the steps of doing cross-sell. Now in practice most optometrists would do cross-sell after retinoscopy. So they would do retinoscopy first and then use the cross-sell to fine-tune the prescription. But these videos are designed really to equip people who live in sort of remote rural areas where there is perhaps no access to that kind of equipment. So we are keeping the refraction process subjective throughout. So we've got a patient, we found their best vision sphere, we've managed to get the green and the red on the durochrome, remember we were looking at the durochrome, we managed to get the green and the red equal in clarity. It may not be sharp but the green and the red targets look the same. So that means that that circle of least confusion is on the retina. So now we're going to start the cross sill process and a cross sill looks like this. It's a toric lens that's been put into a metal frame with a handle. You have two powers running at 90 degrees to each other. One is a plus power, the other is a minus power. So this is a minus 050 and a plus 050. So you've got minus 050 running in one direction which is marked with a red line. You've got the plus 050 running in at 90 degrees to that and uh, which is marked with a black line. And you have some white dots in between those lines which we use when we are assessing the direction of the astigmatism. So the cross sail is designed to enable us to assess whether someone has got astigmatism or not and if they do, how much astigmatism do they have and in which direction. So for doing the cross sail we use the concentric circles which are these round circles in the white background and what we do is we get them looking at the chart wearing their best vision sphere in the trial frame and then we place the cross sill in front of their eye and then we ask them do those circles look more round darker and sharper in position one or position two so we swirl the cross sill and then we ask them to make a decision between two positions and I'm now going to demonstrate those positions using a little diagram and a photograph and hopefully it will make sense. Right, so here we have our patient and um, we've done subjective refraction and we found that their best vision sphere is plus 350 and um, so what we do is we put that plus 350 into the back of the trial frame so we place the 350 there and we start the cross sill uh, process so we get the patient to look at the chart at the concentric circles and we then first of all we need to find out whether they have astigmatism and if so in which direction that astigmatism would be so we're going to start with the 050 Sill, you'd normally start with the O50 and then you just place that in front of their eye and you ask them to look at the circles and you ask the questions do those circles look more round, sharper and clearer in position one or position two? And then you do it again, just give them time to make a decision. Do they look clearer in position one or position two? Now if they say one is better than the other then we know that they do have astigmatism. So we just need to find out now which one is better. So let's say that they prefer position two which is here. We can then assume that they do have astigmatism and that the minus sill will be running along this sort of meridian, along 180 or thereabouts. So it's going to be in this direction rather than in that direction. So we put the minus 050 into the frame and we rotate it so that it is at 180. So here's our starting point. 050 minus 050 running at along the 180 meridian. We then place the cross seal over there with the white dots 
in the 180 direction. So we've got two white dots which is along the 180 and we do the same again. We ask the patient, do the circles look more round, sharper and clearer in position 1 or position 2? And you can see that we are rotating the, the, the minus sill power from 45 to 135. So we're now asking the patient to compare those two positions. So again you ask that question, do the circles look more round, clearer and sharper in position 1 or position 2? If they say position 2, then you know that you have to move the sill power into in this direction towards where the minus 050 is running. So you don't move it a huge amount, you just move it in small amounts because we're just slowly getting to the right direction. So we're going to move the sill by 10 degrees. So we now are going to move the sill with an axis to an axis of 170. So we rotate the sill in the trial frame by 10 degrees so that it is now facing the 170 meridian. And we're going to do that one more time. We're just going to double check that direction using the cross sill, using those white dots. And this time we put the white dots on the 170. We say, do the circles look more round, darker and sharper in position 1 or position 2? Position 1 or position 2? And if they say they prefer position 2, which is here, we know that we need to move the sill slightly more in that direction. So we move it another 10 degrees. So now we are moving it to an axis of 160. So now the minus 050 axis is running at 160. So that is where we are. So we've moved the axis 20 degrees using the cross sill method. So now we're going to just see whether they like a little bit more minus in front of that sill. So in this case we don't use the white dots, we use the actual power meridian itself. So this is the minus 050 here. We place that over the 160 degree axis and we ask the same question, do the circles look more round, clearer and sharper in position 1 or in position 2? And you do it one more time. Do those circles look better and sharper in position 1 or do they look better in position 2? And what you're doing is in position 1 you're adding minus to the sill power at 160. Position 2 you're adding plus. Okay, now if they say they like position 1 better then we know we need to increase the sill power by 050. So we're going to add another 050 along that line. So 050 plus 050 equals 1. So we're going to change the sill now to minus 1. So we have minus 1 running at 160 now. Now there is a, a, there is a rule when you're doing cross sill we have to add plus to the best vision sphere when we increase the sill, when we increase the minus power of the sill. And we always increase the plus by half of the amount we increase the minus. So we've increased the minus here to minus 1. So we have to add 050 to this. So that will become plus 4. So at the moment we've got plus 4, minus 1, axis 160. Right, so we're going to see if they want any more minus in that meridian. So you could at this point reduce the sill to a, an 025 sill and then you just ask the same question. Do those circles look more round, darker and sharper in position 1 
and that minus 025 is running on top of the minus 1 that's already there so you're increasing the sill by 025 so you're increasing it by 025 there and then you are adding plus so you're decreasing the sill in that position so you're adding minus in position 1 you're adding plus in position 2 and then you ask the same question do, do the circles look better more round and sharp in position 1 or in position 2. They say they like position 1. We know that we can then increase the sill power by 025. So we change that to 1.25. Okay, and then you do the same again. Using the, the 025 cross sill, you place the minus along that same meridian, that 160 meridian, and you ask the same question, which is better, position 1 or position 2? Position 1 or position 2? And if they say position 1, then we can then increase that cell to be minus 150. Okay, so we now have a prescription with plus 4, minus 150, acts as 160. Now remember we've got to now do something with this power because we've added another 050 to this power. So in, because we've added 050, we've added minus 050 to the sill, we now need to add plus 025 to the sphere. So we're going to put another 025 in the back of the trial frame. So we now ended up with a plus 425 in the back and a minus 150 axis 160 in the front. Now you know that you've arrived at the correct sill axis when the patient does not discern any difference between one position and another. So when you ask them the question, is position 1 better or position 2, and they say they can see no difference, you know that you've arrived and that that is the best axis position for them. That is their axis, because you cannot move this either way, because according to this test, it's the same. There's no improvement that can be made. And in the same way with the, the power, when you're doing your fine tuning with the, the 025 power, and you offer up the 025 and then you swirl it so you've got you're adding minus 025 and plus 025 if they say that there's no difference between those two then again you know that you've arrived at the correct cylindrical power and then you just leave it alone and when you've got the cylindrical element of the prescription sorted out, you then can just quickly do a, um, a spherical test whilst the patient is looking at the Snellen chart and you're just going to add a, an 025 just to double check. If they see the chart the same, if there's no change or it's a little bit better, then you give them the 025. If it just takes the edge off and it makes it a little bit more blurred, then obviously you keep it away. And then obviously you can try again with the minus 025 just to make sure double check that that doesn't bring any improvement. So that's it. You've got your final prescription. In this case it's plus 425 sphere with a minus 150 sill, axis 160. Well that's the, um, the theory dealt with on, the, on how to do cross sill and uh, once you've got that prescription you have to just um, do one more final test which is called the plus, the plus one blur test and what you do is you get the patient wearing the correction that you've given them and you get them to look at the Snellen chart here and what should happen is that when they're looking at the chart when you put a plus one in front of the prescription that you've given it should blur their vision back by about four lines so if they can see say seven five it'll blur, blur them back to about 624 something like that if that happens and you know you've got the right prescription if it only blurs them back a, a line or two then it's possible that you've 
you've under plus them or over minus them so you just need to recheck your results again anyway I hope that it's not been too confusing I've tried to keep it as simple as possible so um, anyway I hope uh, that it's been helpful